Hi, this is Heather. I'm a guest blogger today with MCP Actions. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial about using brushes in your Photoshop and Photoshop Elements collections to create clipping masks that you can use to do artistic effects with your photographs. My starting example is this 5x7 image of a window in an old barn. It's 5 by 7 and 600 ppi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file that's 5 by 7 by 600 ppi with a white background. The white background is a good starting point because it makes things very visible. Next, I'm going to create a new layer in my new file. This is where the mask is going to be created and where you're going to be applying your brushes. Now, go to your palette and make sure that you've selected a visible color. In this case, I'm using black. Next, go to the left hand side and select your brush tool. I have quite a collection of brushes, so I'm going to select uh, the square one and I'm going to make it a little bit larger so that this example can go quickly. It's a, it's a square brush with a bit of a fringed edge to give it some texture. So I make sure my, my mask layer is selected and I start applying my brush. As you can see, brushes have different opacities to them. In this one, the middle is denser and the edge is a little bit more fringed and faded. In the end product, when the, the image is clipped to this mask, you'll notice that where your colors are denser is where more of your photograph is going to shine through. So when you create your mask, make sure that you have enough area where your photographic element shines through that's important and also make it big enough for all of the elements that you want captured to be captured. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my selection tool. Using this, I'm going to move the photograph from where it is on top of the mask that I just created. Next, using the Alt key depressed I'm going to click on the line separating the photograph and the mask that I just created. Keep the Alt key depressed at all times. Don't depress, release, and then click. You must keep it depressed while you click. And this is the finished image. This is called a clipped image. As you can see, the outline follows the mask that I just created and the opacity at the edges is slightly reduced because of the way the brushes were constructed. If I wish to continue to edit my image, I can. Keeping the photograph selected, I'm going, to sel I'm going to move that layer around a bit if I wish to. Make sure though that your mask is completely covered. If I wish to continue to edit my mask, I'm going to select the mask layer, go back to my brushes, and continue to add and edit my mask. Similarly, you can also use the eraser tool to remove from your mask. There. I'm not an artist, so please bear with me. My next example, I created a mask using a distressed brush instead of the brush that I just used because I wanted to have a distressed texture to my final product. Here, I'm going to use a, a shot that I took of the same barn, but it's a little bit different f-stop. So using my selection tool, I'm going to take this image and move it on top of my mask. However, this image is slightly different size than my mask, so I'm going to enlarge the, the, the photograph and position it so that it's exactly where I need it to be relative to the mask. Again, here when I created my mask, I created the empty file, created the mask layer, and I used red so that it would be visible. Now, again, my photograph is in the layer above my mask. I press down on the Alt key, I click on the line between the photograph and the mask, and this is the final result. It's slightly faded and it has a crackled texture to it, giving it a more distressed look. Again, if I wanted to add more, more photographic density to it, I would continue to paint with the, with the brushes. For a third example, I'm going to show you my paper texture brush. It's a square brush that I use to create something that looks like ragged edged antique paper. Now using this image, 
I'm going to use my selection tool and move it on top of my mask. Clicking on the Alt key and then clicking on the line between the photograph and the layer, you see the final product. Now this, this brush had a lot less opacity to it, so my final product has more of a washed out look to it. If your brush is giving you a lighter density than you like, keep your pen in the same position and click twice on your brush. That will give you double density and it probably will fix the problem. Not only can you use brushes as clipping masks on your photographs, you can also use them to create unique frames. Here's an example. Make it a little bit bigger so you can see. What I did is I created a file that was similar in dimension to my, my central photograph here, but it was larger. So I placed my photograph in the center. I created a layer underneath it that was white for a matting layer. And then underneath that, I have several other layers. What I did is I created a layer that was rose. And then I distressed that layer using brushes. I then used that as a clipping layer for the photograph again, and then reduced the opacity of the photograph. I know that sounds like a lot, but I wanted to show you the finished project before I showed you. I'll walk you through it. I'm going to be using this shot of the barn, and it's 4.167 inches by 2.977 inches and 600 ppi. Now I want to create a frame that has a one inch border all the way around. So I'm going to add two inches to each dimension and create a new file with those dimensions. And here it is. 6.167 inches by 4.977 inches and 600 ppi with the white background. The white background makes things easier to start with. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. This is going to be my matting layer. Now before what we did is we used the brush to add and create a, cri a clipping layer. In this instance, we're going to use the brushes as an eraser to distress a matting layer. I'll show how it's done. Using your color tool, go to your photograph and select a color that's really a color you want to bring out in your photograph and is part of one of your key photographic elements. In this, element, in this instance, I'm going to use a dusty rose that is from the barn. I'm then going to take my painting tool and I'm going to fill that new layer with that rosy color. Next, I'm going to choose my eraser tool. I'm going to choose a distressed style of brush and I'm going to apply it to my new mat that I just created. Now the center of the mat isn't that important because your photograph is going to be there, but you certainly want to make sure that you cover all the elements. Okay, so here is your distressed mat. It's rosy, it's textured. Now we're going to move the photograph in. Here we go. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new layer for my white. Move it underneath my photograph. Get my painting tool. Select my white. And fill the layer that we just created. Then I'm going to use my selection tool to shrink it down. Great. Okay, and now I'm going to select the top layer, press down on the shift key, select the background, and align all the layers to make sure that everything is centered. Now, this is an interesting effect in and of itself. 
because you've got a rosy frame with texture to it that brings out the red element of the barn in the picture. But you can do more with it. Selecting your rosy layer, select the photograph that you're framing again and drag it into the picture. Take that photograph and enlarge it so that it covers the entire matte layer. As you can see, there's kind of a kaleidoscope effect on here. What you're going to do now is you're going to click your Alt key and click on the layer of the photograph you just brought in and the mat. Here it is down here. Now you have a distressed copy of your photograph as a framing mat of your picture, which again is interesting, but we're going to change it a little bit making sure that that background photograph is selected, go to the opacity selection and reduce the opacity using the slider. What this does is that it fades the photograph and allows some of that distressed rosy layer to shine through. And voila! There is your finished product. So you've used a combination of techniques using brushes, as erasers and as brushes, as clipping masks and as frames, and I hope you got some interesting ideas and learned something along the way. Again, this is Heather as an MCP guest blogger. If you're interested in checking out my photographic prints, I can be found at Little Black Dog Studio on Etsy. Have a great day.